Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I'm going. What is the good doubt? Uh, when we use PySpark data frame and when we use uh, Pandas data frame, what is the difference between both? Mm -hmm. So, PySpark, as I understand, is a big data environment, uh, and Pandas is uh, from what I understand of Pandas, it is not a big data environment. Okay. So big data is basically uh, where you cannot do or uh, the data is so big that you cannot work on one system. Okay. So let's say you need to load 10 GB worth of data. So uh, mostly our RAMs would be 16 GB or so on. If you load 10 GB, your system will not work or maybe maybe your data is 20 GB worth of data. So in one go, you cannot do one operation on your data. Uh, what I mean to say is, let's say you want to plot uh, all of your data uh, for two features, something on X axis, something on Y axis. Uh, and your data, uh, to read your data, you require 20 GB, but your system is only 16 GB, right? So you may not be able to do it in one go. You may have to break your data into multiple parts, do your analysis on smaller parts, then aggregate the results and then show it. Okay. Pandas data frame, we, we can't run in servers. Pandas data frame, you can't, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that PySpark is used for something like that. Okay. Okay. Right. Where either the, uh, uh, memory requirement or the computation requirement cannot be done by one system. You then run it on server. So uh, PySpark basically runs on, you've got a pipeline, you've got a series of servers available on the cloud. Yes. And then you use some parts for uh, data collection, some parts for aggregation, some parts for visualization, some parts for computation, some parts for deployment and so on. Uh, I am also unsure of Pyspox. I have never used Pyspox. I started to uh, once learn something about it uh, in, the, in the past, but then some other things came up. I was not able to explore it further. Okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, the thing with big data is you would be you would have to have some more skills uh, to understand. Uh, how we would work simple things for big data also. So like, even if you want to take some, something as simple as mean or something as simple as standard deviation, you cannot see all of your data. So you'll have to have a strategy of how you will divide your data and how you will run those operations. And you have to be very careful uh, in, in the sense that uh, in Pandas, what you do is you just run an operation and you move to the next one. You don't think how long it will take because you assume that you know maybe it will take uh, not so long. But with PySpark or with big data environment, you have to be very careful what analysis you're doing and is it really worth it? Because uh, it it takes time. Uh, every day, every trial you do will cost you some money in terms of time at least. So, okay. so those are some new skills we'll have to acquire as a data scientist while moving to big data environment. Okay, I actually started working on that. Oh, amazing. Uh, forced to start working on that. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> You're working on Skywise, right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, you have to move to Skywise. There is no option, right? You have to. Okay. So, uh, uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is very, very exciting. So, yesterday I said it was exciting because we entered, entered into uh, actual data sciences. Uh, today I'm saying it is very, very exciting because we take up our first use case of a very good problem statement. And this problem statement is interesting because it exposes us to all parts of uh, machine, all parts of a data science project. So if you look at uh, uh, my screen here, uh, before I explain to you what the problem is, I will explain to you uh, what are the general steps that we do for a data science project? Okay. So, so from defining a problem statement to collecting data, uh, doing exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, modeling, and testing. So we'll do all of it in, in this uh, example. Uh, even before talking about this example, let me take you to another website. Uh, I'm going to 
Kaggle.com. Uh, any of you have heard of Kaggle.com? Okay. So, uh, if you are starting your journey as a data scientist, uh, Kaggle.com is the place that you want to leave your footprint on. Okay. So, you need to create an account here. And uh, what Kaggle.com is, is it's a place where data scientists come together for learning, uh, sharing their experiences, practicing hands-on on, on uh, data. Uh, practicing hands-on on competitions, participating with each other, uh, trying to solve certain problems, looking at the leaderboard, how our score is moving and so on. Okay. So it's, it's this uh, amazing place where you can come and you can work. Okay. So if you open an account here and you go to the compete section, there are certain competitions that are, uh, so, okay, this is, showing as my competitions okay so there are certain competitions uh, which are always open okay uh, titanic machine learning disaster is taken from uh, this data set so if i open this data it gives me it gives me some basic idea of what this data is uh, it gives me further description on how what is our evaluation method? What are we trying to solve? If you go to the data section, it will give you access to downloading this data. So we say, okay, there is a gender submission file, test file, a train file. You can download this data and work upon it. In the notebooks section, uh, is you will see several people have openly made their approach available on how they have solved this data. Many people write tutorials, many people write, uh, so you've got an introduction to PySpark, so they must have taken Titanic data set as an example to explore PySpark. So people do all sorts of stuff. Okay. So as you gain experience, uh, uh, you will get these dots, more the number of dots shows how much more experience you have on data.com. There is a discussion section where if you're stuck with something and you want to discuss uh, something about uh, a problem, you can put it up here and there are several people who would love to answer. As you submit your submissions, leaderboard shows the ranking of different people. How, uh, so when you put something, you can see how much they scored and how much you scored and how far were you from each other. Rules give us some basic idea and you can form teams. Uh, you can take a team name, you can form teams on Kaggle, and then you can try solving problems together. So this problem is, is basically a non-graded uh, entry-level problem. But as you come to Kaggle.com, you will find uh, much more problems. So these are open problems like here, maybe Google landmark retrieval problem, and OSIC pulmonary fibrosis progression problem. So what companies do? is uh, if I'm a data science company and or I am a company who needs a data science solution, uh, I have two options. I can either take the project uh, uh, to my employees or if the, if, the, if the problem is fairly generic in nature, I can open up the problem to the uh, data science community here on Kaggle and give some prize money. So they get several teams that will work on this problem. So let's say cardinal bird call identification, 412 teams are working on this. So you get so many people to work for you to solve this problem for at least for the company, a fairly less amount. And uh, they would choose a winner who for a given period. So this is a research problem two months to go. It's a good competition. Whoever wins, they will have a, you know, a, com a, a winning, uh, distribution of how they'll divide the money and so on. So it's a very good place uh, to come and learn a lot of stuff. Okay. So it is, uh, I, I'm exposing you to this one because uh, uh, this is where we are taking the machine, uh, Titanic machine learning from disaster problem. And we'll try exploring and we'll see how we can solve this problem. Uh, what are the steps involved? And how does this help us in uh, understanding uh, uh, the different parts to practice and so on 
Further, it also opens up to much more than just one problem. Uh, I would strongly suggest to create an account, start becoming active uh, uh, on, on this website. And as we gain with some experience, start taking bigger and bigger problems. So this is one of the parts. If you remember uh, our first class, Srinivas, uh, we, in the last part, I showed something called as uh, uh, the journey uh, learning data science. Uh, and within that, uh, the, there was uh, uh, one of the steps was opening up or building a good data science portfolio. Okay. And that would help you, that would help us probably get better jobs in the future. So opening data science portfolio or building a data science portfolio involves working on multiple problems. And Kaggle is an excellent place to find multiple problems, uh, get a good network of supporters who would help you solve this problem with tutorials and discussions and forums and so on. So this is a very good place. Uh, I would strongly suggest to open up an account and start working. In the meantime, uh, let me now come back to the problem and we'll discuss what this problem is and so on. Okay. Do you have any questions before we go ahead? Okay. Sure, let's, let's go ahead then, okay? So uh, we start with first uh, defining the problem statement. So uh, I will, this is just a representative image to, to get us excited about this problem. Uh, we collect the data. So as I download the data from uh, either uh, Kaggle or uh, this place here on GitHub, uh, I get two files. Uh, test.csv and train.csv. I can see the number of files in my present folder. So let me show here. So this is my present folder. And within the present folder, I'm in the Titanic folder. Within the Titanic folder, there's a folder called as input. And here are where my files are, test.csv and train.csv. So when I do ls input, uh, it gives me the number of files in my input, test and train. I import pandas and I load both of these files, train.csv and test.csv into two data frames, train and test. Okay. So in this case, loading data is extremely simple. Two files that loads my data. Okay. So big data, this would not be the case. This, this loading the data would, would itself be a huge step uh, involving multiple parts and so on. Uh, let us go further and do some exploratory data analysis. So if I take my train data set and do a dot head on it, we get the first five rows and all the columns of our data set. Okay. So this is the point where we will explore a little bit more and see what the data is trying to tell us. Okay. So for the Titanic uh, data set, uh, the data set consists of multiple rows of these columns. The columns are passenger ID, survived, uh, passenger class, P class stands for passenger class, the name of the passenger, the gender of the passenger, age of the passenger. Uh, this feature called as SIBSP. This stands for sibling spouse. Okay. So did this passenger have any siblings or spouse on board the Titan? So this data sets one means this passenger had at least one sibling or a spouse on the Titan. P-A-R-C-H stands for parent children. Okay. So did you have, did the passenger have any parents or children on board? And zero means no parents, no children. Ticket. So we have the ticket number of the passenger. Fare. This is the fare he paid to board the Titanic. Cabin, that is in which cabin was he uh, situated? So the Titanic had multiple cabins. So what was the cabin number that he was in? And NAN means this is a missing value. So I don't, we don't know what cabin this person was. But if you look at the second data, uh, C85. So Mrs. Uh, John Bradley was in the cabin C85. Embarked is where did they board the Titanic from? So there were three places, let me come back here, where they could embark from, that is 
port of embarkment, embarkation could be C, this stands for Cherbourg, SQ stands for Queenstown, S stands for Southampton. These were the three different places people boarded on the Titanic. So this embark tells us which, uh, which place uh, a particular passenger boarded from. Let me also explain what survived is. Survived has two options, zero for no, one for yes. That is, did this passenger survive the disaster? Okay. So after the Titanic, many people survived, many people did not. And the numbers here, uh, zero or one, tells us whether this passenger has survived or not. Okay. So this has been constructed from uh, actual data of the Titanic uh, disaster and uh, as much information as we have on this data. Okay. P class or passenger class is the ticket class. Uh, first class, second class or third class, depending upon how costly the ticket is. Okay. So class one would be more costly the ticket, uh, more facilities uh, and so on. Uh, rich people poured within this class. Third class would be the economic class, uh, affordable class, uh, people would poured in. Uh, I've already talked about sibling spouse, parent children, ticket number, cabin number, and baggage. Okay, so uh, uh, hope uh, uh, the data is clear. Okay, now I, I'll talk about, so this is the data in the train, uh, for the train data set, we have this. So we have not specifically talked about what is train data and what is test data. Uh, for now, uh, let, let this be a question mark. Uh, uh, when, when we actually go into deeper into machine learning, I'll describe more or I'll describe more on what is the train data set and what is the test data set. Today's or uh, I hope today or uh, maybe even tomorrow, our agenda is we have explored one idea in data analytics. We have explored the idea of pre-processing. So uh, we would work through this problem till the pre-processing part. Then we'll take a break from this problem, go back, do some machine learning or learn about machine learning, then come back to this data set and then go deeper. Okay. So first part, we're just doing pre-processing, uh, which is, uh, as we discussed last class, 80% of the task. Okay. So this is our dream data set. If I look at the shape of our data set, uh, we get train dot shape is 891 uh, comma 12 which means that there are 891 rows and 12 columns. Okay. If I look at test.shape and I execute this, I get 418 rows and 11 columns. Okay. So we clearly see that one column is missing in the test data set. And probably the column that is missing in the test data set is something that we want to predict automatically using our machine learning algorithm. Okay. So that is the task. If I look at test.head, I see this is the data I have for test okay. Are you able to spot which feature, which attribute is missing? Survived. Survived, excellent. Okay. So basically the survived, which was you know after passenger ID, we had a column here survived, that is missing in the test data set. And uh, that gives us a clue that we are expected to take this data as input and the, our algorithm should throw out a number for based on this data, whether a person survived or not. Okay. And uh, that, that is the problem statement. That is the problem statement. That is a task. So using the train data, we know for the other parameters, if a person has survived or not, we are trying to train a model that will be able to take uh, passenger class name, uh, gender, age, sibling, spouse, parent, children, ticket, fare, came in, embarked, take this data and throw out a number for whether uh, this person has survived or not. Okay. Now, the way you will test this is we would uh, run our prediction and upload a solution to Kaggle. And Kaggle has the list of answers for these guys, for, for the test data set. And it will evaluate how good or bad our machine learning model was able to predict. Okay, and based on that, you will get some metrics, some, some score and so on. Okay, so, so that is the problem statement. Okay. If we take train.info, train.info would uh, you know, give us some more information about the uh, 
features in available in the train data set. So we see uh, here, if we start reading this, it says the range index 891 entries, which goes from 0 to 890. Data columns 12. Uh, these are our column names going from 0 to 11. Passenger ID, non-null 891 values. Data type, integer. So we know that we have no missing values in passenger ID. Passenger ID is an integer variable. Going ahead, you see survived, you see P class, you see, so uh, till this all numbers, name is our first object. Object, so uh, Python, sorry, pandas takes uh, string, uh, strings like this and says that this is an object element. Okay. So it says name is object, sex is object, that is male or female, age is float because we have floating point numbers 47.0, 34.5 and so on, 40 point numbers, sibling, poise and, and so on. It goes to the list and describes what the data types are. But here you see there is one problem here. Age is 714, that is out of the 891 people, we have only age for 714 people. For the other people, our age is missing. And if we go down, we see cabin. Out of 891 people, we have cabin for only 204 people. And embarked, we have 889, that is two, uh, P, uh, two people are missing, uh, or we don't know where they embarked from. Okay. So this is our data for train. If we look at our data for test, that is uh, for what, you know, for the case that we'll be trying to test on, we have 418 entries, zero to 407, of which, again, age, some values of age is missing, some values of fare are missing, one value of fare is missing, and a lot of values for cabin are missing. Uh, embarked, we don't have any problem here. So that is our uh, basic info on train and test. Let's go ahead. We can see that age value is missing for many rows. Out of 891 rows, the age value is present only in 714 rows. Similarly, cabin values are also missing in many rows. Only 204 out of 891 rows have cabin values. Now, if I want to find out exactly what the sum is, I can do a simple operation uh, within Pandas. Uh, I'll take the train data set, dot is null, and uh, what this would do is train dot is null would give me a Boolean uh, table of true and false. And wherever data is present, it will give us true. Uh, sorry, wherever data is not present, it will give us true. Wherever data is missing, basically wherever data is null, it will give us true everywhere else it will give us false okay so that is the first maybe i can break this problem down i can i can show you in user steps so let's say if i just take train and i run this it tells me that this is what my train data looks like okay so it is all 0 to 890 rows on this data when i do dot is null so i am taking this data and i'm calling the is null function over this data when I execute this, it gives me a series of trues and false. Okay. False for when data is present, true for when data is missing or data is null. Now, if I do dot sum, what I'm doing is I am adding each of the uh, columns here. I'm adding each of the columns here. Okay. So if I add all the false values, let's say I'm assuming there are no false values in passenger ID. If I keep adding false, false is interpreted as zero. When I keep adding false, I will get zero for passenger ID. Wherever I have missing data, each true will correspond to one, uh, one value. Okay. And adding those ones will give me the sum of missing values. So if I do this and I press execute, that takes, okay, if I add all the values in passenger, I get zero. If I add all the values in survived, I get zero. If I add all the values in age, I get 177. So that tells me there are 177 missing values for age, 687 missing values for cabin, and two missing values for embarked. Okay. Now, in this case, the list is pretty small. We just have 12, uh, 12 uh, features to look at. And so it doesn't matter if we are in sorted or not, but I can easily sort them by writing this extra command dot sort values ascending equal to false. Okay, so that means uh, dot sort values in the descending order. So it just puts cabin as the top priority, 
uh, for missing values, then age, then embark, and everything else is here. Okay. So I'll take this. So within pandas, this is very interesting because since uh, we have access to the pandas object, you can take something, uh, provide uh, uh, its output to the next part, provide its output to the next part, provide its output to the next part, so that you get a very complex statement, but in one line of code. Okay. So here we have all missing values for train. If I do the same for test, we get this uh, numbers and we just now know how many values are missing here. Okay. So we will also uh, import uh, matplotlib to get some plots. We will import c1 to get some plots. And this next section will help us to visualize or to help us to do some something called as exploratory data analysis. We are trying to explore more about our data. Okay, so at this point, uh, we are saying that, okay, we know very less about our data and each step that we take uh, do will reveal to us more about the data, which will help us uh, frame the problem uh, and thus solve the problem in, 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 the, in the steps to come. Okay. So we will do something like this. So the task is we will create bar charts for different categorical features. Okay, so what are the categorical features we have? We have categorical features for passenger class for gender, for uh, number of siblings or spouse, for number of parents or children, uh, for embarked and for cable. Categorical features are, uh, okay. Categorical features are uh, features uh, whose data is in the form of categories. So when you look at when you look at these features, uh, you see passenger class. They are in the form of categories, even though this is numbers. Okay, the numbers are one, two, and three, but these one, two, and three represent categories. Name definitely not categories. Sex yes, categories. Two categories: male and female. Age not categories. Sibling spouse even though numbers uh, the numbers are fairly small. Uh, you know, uh, it it will go in discrete sets. Here also it will go in discrete sets, uh, not categorical, ticket number, uh, fare, fare is also not categorical, cabin, uh, probably categorical, and embark is also categorical. Okay. So this is uh, some kind of, uh, you know, how we'll say our categorical features are. And our aim is that we will try to plot bar charts for these categorical features that will reveal to us some more information. So in this process of uh, drawing this bar chart for categorical features, I said that let me write a function which we will use multiple times to create multiple plots. Okay. So for this function, uh, the name I'm giving is bar chart. The input is feature. Which feature do we want to plot for? Okay. So maybe first let me show you what the answer I'm looking and then we'll come back and we'll see what code we will write. Okay. So answer we are looking at something like this. So if I take bar chart and I give the feature name, okay, the feature name has to match with the column name uh, here within the data. Okay. So if I give any of the feature name, what my bar chart should be is it should draw number of bars for as many values are there within as many categories are there within that feature. Okay. So if I look at the feature sex, there are two categories. Uh, sorry, uh, let me rephrase. Uh, irrespective of how many features, how many categories are there, I will get two bars, one bar for survived, one bar for dead. Okay. Now each bar, if you see is a multiple stacked bar, multiple stacked bar chart and each stacking it represents the categories that are there within that feature. So if you look at the feature sex, there are two categories, male and female. Okay. So for each survived or dead, you will have as many stacked uh, charts here. Okay. So uh, this is the plan. This is the plan that we want to create a function given the feature. It gives us this plot and this plot is pretty useful. So here, maybe even uh, at the surface level, you can see that from all the data that we have, we have more data for the people who died compared to the people who survived. So at least in our 891 rows of data, we have 
a, a lot more values for people who have died. If I look at the distribution of that data, I see that from uh, people who survived, males have survived less and males have died more, whereas females have survived more and females have died less. Okay, so this gives me the distribution of how my the, how the people who have survived or dead uh, are based on at least the gender. Okay, so this plot will be very useful for multi, especially later on when we do it for multiple uh, for multiple uh, features. We want to create a function so that we don't have to write this code again and again. Okay, so let's look at this uh, function. Okay, so first we are saying we'll go for the people who have survived okay we'll we'll try to get the data that will give us this plot and then dead is we'll try to get the data that will give us this plot so to, to get the data for people who have survived what do we need so first we what we need to do is from our data set we need to shortlist all the rows for which the survived column is equal to one okay so we take train and we say, okay, how do I select rows? So I just put a uh, square brackets in front of it. And I said that, let me put the criteria or the Boolean criteria based on which I will shortlist or filter out my rows. The Boolean criteria is for the train data set, for the train data frame and for the survived feature equal to equal to one. This will give me all the rows which have survived is equal to one. Once I have all the rows, now I am interested in only one feature. So the feature that the user puts in here for bar chart is the feature that we are only interested in. So this would give me the series object of that feature for all the rows for which survived this one. Once I have that information, I do dot value counts. And what value counts does is it gives me the number of categories that are there within the within that feature and it will count those both categories and give me the answer. So let me show you an example here. So let us start building this example slowly. Okay. So if I just take train and I execute this, it will give me the entire data set. Now from this entire data set, we are only interested for people who have survived. So we'll write a criteria, we'll say train survived is equal to equal to one. When I execute this, now you see we don't have all the rows. We have only 342 rows. Indexes, different uh, different indexes, but 342 rows. So these are all the rows for which you see survive category is one. Now we are only interested in one of them. Okay? So let's say our feature is sex. So I put another uh, in square brackets. I put this uh, single quotes and I write the name of the feature. I execute this. So now it just focuses on that one column for all these selected rows for that one column. Uh, small doubt. Yes. Uh, why we are going for another square bracket? We can add in, inside itself and and we can add sex also, right? Like that. Within okay. this. Uh, yes. Let me try. What you're saying? Okay. So within this, if I put this as one criteria, and I'll say and. Ah, so this see this is not a filter, right? Means uh, the first bracket is the filter for the number of rows we want, right? Okay. So uh, the second criteria that we want is we want the entire column. It is not a filter for the number of rows. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. So I cannot put it as an and here. Yeah. So this is a filter for, or this is a selection on the number of the feature which we want, right? So for that, uh, I don't need to put this. I, maybe I can show you one more way of doing this, but le let me continue with this example. Uh -huh. also, okay? So we go here, we get our series. Now we have several female, several male. We need to count how many males, how many females. Okay? So pandas has a very neat function called as value counts. And what value counts does is when I execute this, it will see how as many categories and based on how many categories are there, it will give me that many rows. For each category, it will count how many values we have. So now for female, we have 233 values. For male, we have 109 values. Okay. And this is what we will pass to survived. Okay. 
So let me also explore, as Anand was suggesting, uh, a different way of sorting. So uh, if you remember when we were looking at pandas earlier, we learned that two interesting functions, uh, the dot lock and the i lock. The dot lock would give me location based on labels and i lock would give me a location based on indexes. So here we will use dot lock for location based on labels. Now, uh, again, if I just put train, this gives me the entire data set. If I do dot loc, and now I have to specify some criteria. So the first criteria is train survived equal to equal to one. When I execute with this, it, it gives me same thing like here, where I have a short listing of the of all the rows for which survived is equal to one. Now I want the feature uh, gender. Okay, so I'll put comma here and I'll put the gender that I'm interested in. And I, sorry, the feature that I'm interested in. And when I pre press enter within this comma, so the before the comma, these are the criteria for the rows. This is the criteria for the columns. And the dot lock then returns to me this series over which you can do value counts. And we'll have the same result as earlier. So uh, in that sense, pandas is, uh, I, I would say, a bit more ambiguous. So to get one task done, there are multiple ways of doing it. Okay. So these are one of the downsides of using pandas because uh, when you have multiple ways of doing the same thing, uh, uh, our codes will differ. Okay. So what someone writes may differ from what you would write to get the exact same output and get the exact same thing. So in, in that sense, pandas is not very efficient. So what I would suggest is over a period of time, you start developing a preference for how you would want to do a certain task and use that preference every time. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll show you one more thing to access one of the features. Let's say I can say train and survived is one of the features. So when I do strain survived, I can access the elements of the survived feature. Another way of doing the same thing is I write train dot survived. Okay. And I press enter and this also gives me the same task. Okay. Uh, but the dot survived this part will not work if I have a space in my feature. Name. So luckily in, in, uh, uh, in all of these features in this data set, I have to do train dot columns. All of the features here, we don't have a space, but let's say it was sibling space uh, spouse, then I could not have used this notation. I could only use this notation. Okay. So over time, what I have done is I have stopped using this notation altogether. I never use this notation. Why? Because this notation will not work sometimes when I have a space or when I have some special characters in the name of the, in the, in the column name. But here I could use anything. I could have survived and you know, if the, if the feature already had a space, I could use this method of using. So over a period of time, you will start developing certain preferences. I would say it is, uh, it would be something good to do that. Okay, so uh, Anand, have you got this? How uh, uh, we could uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. shortlist this again? Okay. Yeah. So we do this for survived. Similarly, we do this for dead. So what you'll have is, let me do that as in. So if I take the same thing, paste it here and put survived is equal to zero and execute this, you'll have, you'll have all the data that is required to make this plot, okay? So what we do is, once we have the, the data, inside the, the function itself, we are creating a new data frame. We are saying pd dot data frame, and we are creating this data frame using the survived and dead that we created. Okay. So for this data frame, uh, we will have male and female as the column names, and survived and dead as the row names. Okay. So survived and dead as the row names, and male and female as the column names. Okay. So that is what this data frame would look like. And what we are doing is we are simply 
doing df dot plot on this new data frame we are doing df dot plot kind is equal to bar so we are creating a bar plot and stacked is equal to true so we are creating a stacked bar plot the figure size here gives me the dimensions of this figure so when you plug all these things into this function bar chart and feature we can then call uh, different for different classes we can call this function and we will get the neat plot okay so now henceforth we don't have to worry about what is written inside we can focus more on the analysis part of this code okay so i hope the function bar chart is clear okay excellent so it is not necessary to always to create this functions okay uh, many people would uh, write this piece of code again and again also but uh, it is useful to have uh, certain functions that will make our job easier especially when we have to do a lot of analysis okay and uh, maybe bar chart is good for this example for something else may we may, may, may want to use some different kinds of plots so here uh, can we get some uh, analysis on this plot can you look at this plot and uh, uh, say uh, what do we observe or how does this help us in making our model i have already discussed some parts but i just want to hear what, what do you guys see in this in this uh, bar plot Women survive more. That's the main thing. Yeah, women survive more. Excellent. Do you know how much percentage? I can guess seventy-five, twenty-five. Okay, seventy-five, twenty-five. Good. Yes. So, uh, yes, maybe yeah. Uh, since I've already said about this, we can also say that more people died. less people survived and from that further we can say the people who have survived women are more and uh, men are less okay. so these two quantities we can suggest so maybe uh, you know even before we go ahead uh, you would think or you know uh, this is because this is the question that i had uh, earlier is how by you know how would any uh, how would i create a model that takes these as input and gives me the output as survived or not what has this data uh, passenger class name uh, gender age what has this data got to do anything with whether a person survived or not okay do you have the same question uh, no okay yeah. based on sex they used to take children and females first ah, to be yes. both so it makes sense and the yes. first class passenger has a priority Does yes. that make sense? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, great. So uh, e even even before uh, coming to this answer, Anand has talked about a very interesting concept. Okay. Uh, and if if you if you observe his answer, his answer goes outside this data. Okay. So uh, women and children had more preference, and female had more preference. Is something that we know from the movie, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this data does not talk about it. Okay, the the data, like at least till what we have explored, we have not seen uh, so far. Okay, but uh, our information comes from external to this data. Okay, so this is what we would call domain specific knowledge. Okay, so uh, if this was uh, and probably an advertisement data set or an engineering data set or something else where we have less information, then we would not know. this uh, you know uh, why this could be related and that is why you would require exploratory data analysis to tell us how each of these features are related so titanic is fairly uh, like i think most of us know uh, uh, know what happened maybe we don't remember the years numbers and whatever but we we have some idea on what has happened on the titanic and that gives us our domain data and now when we are trying to map here we will see how our domain Uh, how this data is mapped to survive or not so as anand said rightly uh, we already know uh, that females were given more preference children were given more preference older people were given some preference uh, the only category that did not get any preference were the large amount of males um, middle uh, <laughs> large amount of you know uh, adult males okay maybe children males also got preference and so on so we know that data and 
slowly what we are trying to do is we are trying to see each of these features and does this feature give us some more information on whether a person survived or not okay maybe tracking that information for us would be difficult it would be uh, easier for a machine learning algorithm to attribute that uh, attribute that information into a model to be able to predict whether someone survived or not okay and one eyes into that perspective is when we look at this plot when we look at this plot we get two ideas first idea we get is if i so if for all this data i predicted that everyone died then i would be right this many times and i would be wrong these many times does it make sense if i said if i if if my model was very simplistic okay and my model simply predicted no matter what input you give it the model predicts that the person dies okay then if i look at this uh, division maybe let me do a very quick analysis i want to see how many people survived and how many died so i can do train survived dot value counts i can see five okay uh, and let me take this and further divide it by uh, 891 okay that gives me 61% people died and 38% survived okay so if my model just predicted that everyone died my model would have an accuracy of 61% on the train data does that make sense yes okay so that is my most simplest model okay i am not taking anything into account i'm just taking the target variable and the division of the target variable on my train data i'm creating a model that says everyone died but now if i observe this if i observe this information data okay i am trying to add to this information uh, gender also if i look at gender i think i can do better than 61% okay my accuracy can be better than 61% how i will attribute if someone is male or not if someone is male uh, and if i predict that uh, females okay if i predict that all females survived then my accuracy would be better why because let me let me create one more data if i say in uh, let me do a group by okay. okay so if you if i look at 891 data i have 577 males and uh, 314 females okay let me so let me put this inside okay uh so of the females who have not survived have are 81 sorry let me okay yeah so this is it uh of of all the females so of all the females 233 have survived 81 have died and of all the males 109 have survived 468 have died so if my model was very simplistic and i said that every female survived and every male died okay then uh, looking at this data how many times will my model be correct so my model uh, does it make sense what i'm trying to say here i'll i'll rephrase my question again okay if i say if i have a very simple model which checks the gender and i say that every me every female survived and every male died out of these four columns which of them will be which of them i will score rightly and which of them i will score wrongly out of females 233 times we are correct yes and out of males only 109 times we are correct Uh, no out of males 
four six, ha, four six. six. We are correct, right? Because I'm saying all females survived yes. and all male died. So this yes. is the number of times we'll be correct, and this is the number of times we'll be wrong. So let us look at the percentage, okay? So uh, the number of times we are correct is okay. So, uh, let me see. Correct is equal to two thirty three plus four sixty eight. And we are wrong is equal to eighty one plus hundred and nine. Okay. And if I want to say correct percentage, I'll say correct by eight ninety one. So we are right seventy eight percent, and wrong. We are wrong twenty one percent of the time. Does that make sense? So we see uh, if I don't put the gender criteria, if I just put if I just take our knowledge of survived. If all the people I say died, then I am right sixty one. But I can get more accuracy just by adding this one feature. Okay, just by looking at this one feature and saying that women survived, men died, my model becomes seventy eight percent correct. Okay, very interesting, right? Okay, it, it, it's at least interesting to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Uh, the hope is the idea is as we try to add more features okay we will get more of this distribution and more of this distribution would help us know or may, maybe as you see as we keep on adding this data for us it will be it will start becoming difficult to create a model with just one feature it was very simple to create a model but as we add more data uh, and as more features it will be become difficult for us to create a model because it will start going in towards the Uh, you know the curse of dimensionality higher dimensions and humans cannot think very good in higher dimensions machines can very well uh, they have no problem okay so with this gender let's go to the next data which is passenger class so if we if we take passenger class and we plot a chart can you uh, okay can you probably give some insights on what do you see in this plot and uh, how does it help us to further uh, divide uh, people who survived or died uh, class 3 people died more yes class 3 people died more right what about class 1 and 2 one survived more yes one survived more right so we see more of blue here less of blue here means if you are belong to class 1 uh, most likely you would survive or uh, at least some advantage you have on surviving and if you are belong to class 3 you had a very high disadvantage of not surviving Can you guess what would be the reason? They are in the lower decks. Yes, they were excellent. They were in the lower decks. Okay, so people. Uh, this is what we know. Some parts from reading outside, you would know people who were uh, uh, not of high class. They were so. If you remember, Jack had a party down, and that was probably at the at, at the lower levels of the uh, of the deck. And when the when a ship sinks, the people who are lower would suffer more. Power of you. less chances to jump out or less chances to go to a lifeboat probably even lesser preference on getting lifeboat would be for lower class and so on so this gives us some more insight so if along with our model you know if we take females uh, survived or not so we could say females from first class definitely survived and you know so we can we can then further uh, retune our model and try to add this information and now it will start becoming difficult for us how do we take one simple decision right so we would want to factor multiple things and that is where our machine learning model comes into place let's go down and uh, this is for sibling spouse okay so uh, can you tell me what we do we find from this data sibling spouse No sibling spouse. We the chance of survival is more. No. So no sibling spouse is zero. So when you have zero sibling spouse, uh, more people died here. Died. Okay? Yeah. And uh, more than this at least. So zero means you've got less chances. If you have a sibling or spouse, uh, there's a better chance that you survived. With one, uh, again, this is equal. equal. Uh huh. More or less equal. With two, again, more or less equal. Three. So now, it, now uh, from this point, it becomes difficult to read which color this is and how this is. But at least this legend shows us 
there were as many as eight uh, data, the so eight uh, people who were either related as siblings or spouses. Okay. We have eight of them here. And uh, upper, we see that even, even more number of families, uh, siblings or spouse did not survive. Not necessary that you, you are larger the family, you have survived. It also, it, there is uh, some ratio in between that has done better than more number of people. Did. So we've, we've got some more information from the sibling spouse data. We go deeper into parent children. And here we see survived and dead. Again, we get some information. So now I'll, I'll not go to ahead and we'll not uh, see this. Let's go ahead. We'll see embarked. Embarked also, we can see the people who embarked from S, Southampton, uh, probably more likely died. And people who, yeah, and then C is more or less similar or more on the survive part. So that is our basic, uh, very, very basic data analysis, okay? Uh, we are just looking at the data and we are trying to predict. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll start feature engineering in the next class. I will tell you what is the idea behind uh, the idea of feature engineering and how we are doing this. Okay, so I we want to feed all of this data to the machine learning model, and we are expecting that the machine learning model will give out uh, a number zero or one, zero for survived and one for not survived. Now the thing is, most most machine learning or I say all machine learning algorithms they work on numbers. Okay, they work on numbers. They don't work on text. So it doesn't matter to the algorithm if this we have Mr. Owen Harris Bond is then Brown is the name. Okay. Either we have to ignore this altogether, or we have to convert this into a form uh, that it will can be represented by numbers that the model can understand. Okay. So our next step would be to, to first take all of this data and put it into numbers and give those numbers to the model. We would also want to avoid confusing the model. Okay. So if there is something within this data, which we think has nothing to do with a person surviving or not, then we may want to drop those features out. Okay. Looking at this data, can you tell me one thing that you think is least likely to affect uh, survived or not? Ticket number. Ticket number. Excellent. So ticket right. number, ticket number may not be as important. Okay. Maybe there could be some level of information with the ticket number, but uh, we don't think uh, it may involve too much. So we may want to ignore this. Otherwise, my model will try to learn something, uh, try to find a pattern which is not existing within the data. Okay. Uh, so at this point, when we are doing shallow learning, we want to give only clean. So we talked about a concept, right? Garbage in is garbage out. So if you give garbage to your algorithm, your predictions will be garbage as well. So we would want to remove certain features. Okay. So feature engineering is all about doing that. So using domain knowledge. So we will use domain knowledge. Why domain knowledge? Because we are using knowledge as being humans. We have some understanding, at least more than what the machine has. Okay. So we will use our understanding of what we think is right and wrong and how we would want to divide this data. How we would, do we see bins? Do we see that we can take certain features and divide them into bins? And that we think will, advant will be more advantageous to the model. We'll do all of those steps within Feature Engineer. And after doing this, maybe let me skip all of this. I want to show you the result of our analysis. After doing all of this drama, we will come to this as the output of a Feature Engineer. This is the input that we will feed to our model. So you see all our numbers, very neat. Uh, we have removed certain features. We have combined certain features. We have done some binning. We have some, some discretization. We have done some mapping. So we do all of that uh, in data pre-processing feature engineering combined step. And this will be the data that we feed to the model, which will help us to predict uh, what has happened. Okay. So, uh, first more doubt. Yes. But embarkment also doesn't have any impact on the survival list. Ah, but we see it, it does, right? You, we, do, we brought it on embarked. Let, let me go down. This is, okay, no, let me go up. No, oh, no down. Title, sex, age. Oh no, this is, we have still not reached here. Let me go. 
Just about this. Ah, yes. Okay. So see, embarked. If you embarked from S, uh, likely you died compared to survived, right? Yeah, but theoretically it's okay, but practically I don't. It doesn't make sense much. Ah, so may, may, maybe think of this. Maybe the people who embarked, most of them who embarked from S, could belong to class three. Oh uh, yeah. Mm. So uh, that may play a factor. Okay, maybe maybe a very small factor, uh, or maybe it is difficult for us to see. Yeah. That is actually that, that is why we, you go to when you go to higher dimensions, it becomes because the algorithm may combine certain things. It may say people who embarked from here were probably from class three. Uh, maybe most of them were female. Then we see that embarked has some correlation with gender. It has some correlation with uh, the class. And thus, it may play a factor. Okay. So maybe we don't know at this point. We could actually, what you're saying is true. We could, what we could do is, we could try creating a simple model. So generally, uh, especially when we have too much data, no? uh, what we do is we start. Uh, so let me come to the output of feature engineering. Yes. What we would want to do is, we would want to feed this data to the model in parts. We will just feed one feature and we'll see what is our model's accuracy. Then we'll add one more feature. Then we'll add one more feature. Okay. And we'll see by adding embarked, uh, how much does our number change? If our number does not change too much, then as a data scientist, we could choose, okay, let me skip embarked so that my model becomes more simpler. Okay. Uh, so again, this is a question. Uh, we, we try to answer these questions when we do optimization for our models. Okay. So probably in the classes to come, once we have finished a little bit of, we know some part of machine learning, we'll talk about optimization of models. And then we'll see that, you know, how we can get rid of some features or combine some features together and do something like that. For now, let us not focus on that. Let us focus on uh, maybe basic data processing for now. Okay. I hope uh, I have not confused you guys. Okay. Uh, uh, was most of it understandable today? Yes, it was clear. Okay. So, uh, yes, was you're saying something? Uh, no, yes, exactly. Ah, great. Okay. So, what, what we are doing to now onwards is we are taking ideas, all the ideas that we have learned in the past uh, of uh, Python and of uh, the different packages. And we are now mostly from now onwards, we'll not focus too much on the code part but we'll focus on the analysis part. Okay. Uh, the code part is actually, once you have basic understanding of how the code works, you can always Google, you know, something and get the answer of how to get a code to get something done. Okay. More interesting would be from now onwards to start developing uh, uh, the philosophy or a mindset or perspective of thinking like a data scientist. Okay. How would you analyze features? How would you, you know, what decisions you would take, what you would not, those are more important then the code that will go behind it. Okay. Of course, code is important because without code, you cannot, you, you know, we cannot never, we can never verify what we are thinking is right or not, or how we would do things. Okay. So even if you see, uh, when we were, I was trying to predict this model, uh, if some, if female survived, yes or no is a good answer or not. I had to write some piece of code, maybe not very complicated code, simple code, but we needed some code to help us in doing that analysis. Okay. So that is the part of the code. It's not a very important part, but it is an important part as well. More focus now onwards you could do on, uh, on trying to read charts, trying to do more analysis this way, trying to see what concepts we are using and so on. And over a period of time, we will start developing skills to do this analysis faster and maybe more accurately. Uh, plus this is an art. Okay. Uh, different people will look at the same plot and come to different conclusions. Okay, so we also have to learn how not to get too biased or how not to think that our answer is the best answer always because that may not be so. Uh, we are just trying to uh, faithfully represent uh, how much we understand of the data. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, we may stop for today and we'll continue uh, 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 on Monday. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you, everyone. See thank you later. Bye-bye. So uh, I, I will load this uh, uh, file on our
password. You can download it and you can explore till what we have done. You can explore further also. And uh, I would suggest start uh, ma make an account on Kaggle and just read through, get an idea of what people are doing there. That will help us. So over a period of time, we will also start developing the portfolio. Okay, okay. We'll, start, we'll start developing the portfolio that would be useful for us. Okay. Okay then. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.